Good afternoon. Welcome to the Pacific Region Forum of Our teacher this afternoon is a colleague of mine, Dr. Jing Lee, who is an assistant professor of international business at Simon Fraser University. Dr. Lee received her PhD from the University of Indiana in 2004 and has been with us since then. Dr. Lee will talk about foreign ownership and productivity of international joint ventures and empirical tests in China. Dr. Lee's presentation will be followed by a question and answer period. Okay, <laughs> so um, this paper is about uh, uh, differences in joint venture ownership, how that will affect the productivity of international joint ventures. And uh, as you can see, the, the title changed a little bit from the previous uh, version. So the paper has been evolved over time since I uh, submitted the version last time. And uh, I have two co-authors on this paper. So one is uh, Professor Chang Hui Zhou from Peking University, and the other one is Edward Zajac from Northwest University. Okay. So, here's the uh, presentation map. I will first um, present the motivations for this study, and then uh, I'll give a brief review on literature and show the literature gap. And then I will develop the hypothesis in this article, uh, present data, and then the methods and present empirical findings. At last, I will discuss the results and uh, uh, provide some future studies. Okay, so first of all, why do I want to choose uh, this topic to, to investigate? Uh, international joint ventures, okay, in the literature has been recognized, IGVs can be viewed as efficient mechanisms for technology transfer from the foreign partners in developed countries to uh, uh, domestic companies in developing countries. For example, um, Lay et al. 2001 and Lies and Stock 1996, they analyzed that with the managerial assistance and help from the foreign companies, domestic companies are more likely to learn you know, the advanced technology, the managerial expertise from foreign companies. And Hobbes in 1995 also analyzed several case studies in East Asia. They find by building joint ventures with foreign companies, these Asian companies, they can learn technology faster. And because once you have joint ventures, you have to apply the foreign technology to local use. And through this application process, local companies can really learn, you know, uh, what's going on about this uh, technology and how to improve their own technological capability. So in general, we find out the IGVs are uh, very efficient mechanisms for such kind of technology transfer. And uh, starting joint ventures, we can uh, find out the quality of the technology transfer process from foreign companies to domestic firms. And we can further find out you know, how the foreign direct investment, such as joint ventures, uh, how they impact, impact on the host country productivity. However, we find out in literature, there's a, you know, although it's a very important issue, but very few studies have analyzed the productivity of international joint ventures. And even less is know about you know how the uh, uh, the joint venture equity structure impacts on the productivity of IGVs. For example, if I'm a majority-owned joint venture compared with a, a minority, I mean minority foreign foreign minority-owned joint venture, which one will have a higher productivity? So in this study, so we mainly focus on you know the equity structure and its impact on joint venture productivity. So the private literature mainly you know, focused at the uh, industry level analysis. So uh, literature has recognized that there are two effects from the uh, foreign direct investment. The first one is called technology spillover effect. So the foreign firms can provide some demonstration effects for local companies to learn, and also they can uh, directly transfer technology to, foreign, uh, to local companies. The second effect is uh, once we have you know, foreign companies, lots of foreign companies in this industry, that will increase the market competition. In that way, that will increase the local companies' motivation to improve their productivity. So from both perspectives, we know, you know foreign presence in a country will really increase the productivity of, this, um, of a domestic company. 
Um, so, and a, a bunch of uh, empirical research has found out if in the industry, okay, the, if the, in, the foreign presence in industry is higher, then the average productivity of local firms is higher. However, there are very few studies that focus on okay, explore the, the impact of foreign presence in a firm on its productivity. So they focus on the industry level rather than in the firm level. So, and the international joint ventures provide a good context to study, you know, the, the foreign presence in a firm, how that impacts on the joint venture productivity. And uh, there are only two studies on this, and they have uh, inconsistent results. So one, Aitken and Harrison's paper uh, in American Economic Review, they, they based on longitudinal data in Venezuela and find foreign presence has, you know, positive effects on the uh, plant productivity. However, the other study, the Blomstrom and uh, Soho, they do not support such a relationship based on the data in Indonesia. So our study is not just because there are inconsistent results in literature want to study this. It's also because all these studies, they uh, ignore one thing, the special characteristics of joint ventures. So they only uh, take theories from the FDI literature and the results uh, analyzing the special uh, characters in the uh, joint ventures. So in this study, we want to link these two, the FDI theory and the joint venture literature, and um, try to provide more insights about, you know, how IVVs contribute to the host country productivity. And the second reason that this, that this paper is um, deserves attention is uh, it, it is based on a uh, long human data in China, so we have 5,361 equity joint ventures in China and uh, more than 15,000 observations between 1999 and 2003. So this will be the first study uh, that examines the productive patterns of IGVs in, in China, okay, based on a long term data in China. So in this paper, we have uh, uh, two hypotheses. And uh, all these things are still at a developing stage, so if you have any comments, suggestions, just please let me know. The first hypothesis is mainly based on transaction cost theory. So the basic assumption is that multinational companies' resource contributions play a more important role than local companies' resource contributions in improving a joint venture's productivity. As we know, in developing countries, multinational firms, they can contribute like their uh, managerial expertise, the technology, technical know-how, all these things are the most scarce resources in uh, China, I mean, in developing countries, including China. And the local companies' contributions include like their understanding of the local market, their understanding of the political environment, the business and culture, and uh, some uh, host countries' specific commercial practices. And also, they can contribute some uh, distributional channels, that kind of resources. However, in terms of improving the productivity of joint ventures, we can argue that maybe the multinational companies, uh, their resource contributions play a more important role. So if this assumption is correct, then we can argue that giving the foreign companies a higher ownership in the joint venture will increase the productivity of the joint venture. Because basically, if we give a higher ownership to uh, foreign companies, they will have more incentives to transfer advanced technology and they have better protection of their technology from misappropriation from, by the local partners. Especially in a country with, you know, with a loose uh, intellectual property rights protection, it's very important to make sure your partners will not misappropriate the resources. So from this perspective, we know we should give the foreign companies higher ownership level in a joint venture. And also from organizational justice perspective, if the foreign companies, they contribute more valuable resources, if they have higher control in joint venture, then in their justice judgment, they know this is fair, okay? I contribute more, I control them, and uh, in that way, that can um, minimize the potential partner conflicts in joint ventures. So that will also contribute to the higher productivity in joint ventures. So all these arguments, if we sum them up, we will have the hypothesis one. The higher foreign ownership is positively related to the productivity of a joint venture. 
So the implication of this uh, hypothesis is that foreign majority owned joint ventures should have higher productivity than you know, 50-50 joint ventures and foreign minority owned joint ventures. And then we have a second hypothesis, which is a seemingly you know, contradictory to the first hypothesis. The basic assumption is that it is not just the each partner's contribution that matter most in a joint venture's productivity. Their knowledge integration also plays an important role in improving the productivity of joint venture. After all, joint venture is about how to combine the resources from different parties to produce some synergistic outcomes. So we know the each their knowledge integration also plays an important role. So if we assume that, we can argue from a knowledge-based perspective, 50-50 ownership structure is probably better than any other types of joint ventures, no matter it's a foreign majority-owned or local majority-owned joint ventures. The reason is um, if we have a 50-50 ownership structure, that will facilitate you know, uh, an environment of fairness and it's easier for partners to de develop trust between each other. So in that way, uh, both partners want to contribute their most uh, useful resources to joint ventures, and they, it's easier for them to you know, absorb each other's knowledge, understand each other's knowledge. If we have asymmetric ownership structure, for example, if foreign companies have the majority control of a joint venture, they, uh, they probably they have to dominant control of their, over their uh, strategic resources. In that way, a domestic company's uh, research contribution will not be really valued. I can give you an example here. Uh, in an interview uh, in China, uh, uh, automobile joint ventures between a uh, prestigious German company and uh, one of the biggest automobile companies in China, Chinese companies, they have this joint venture. And uh, the uh, the the foreign company, the German company, has dominant control over everything, including the, the technology. If you want to change anything, you have to you have to report to the headquarters in Germany, and to see whether it's a valuable, it's it's really uh, deserves attention, uh, whether it's necessary to take into consideration the local partners' suggestions. So once they have uh, local partners find out their new model, there are some features that are not very attractive to the domestic customers, so they want to, you know delete these features that will save cost and uh, make the productivity higher of the joint venture. But then the, the German uh, automaker, they report to the uh, headquarters and then after a while, when they think this is really valuable suggestion, they already lose the market to their competitors. So you can see having a majority control over your resources will prevent any, uh, any uh, can mostly prevent the misappropriation of your resources by partners. But in the meantime, it will also discourage the absorption of the other partner's contribution to a joint venture. So from this knowledge-based perspective, we can argue maybe 50-50 joint ventures, uh, in terms of improving productivity, they are better than any other types of joint ventures. So that is basically the second hypothesis in the paper. Okay, so to uh, test this hypothesis, we have the we find data in China, mainly they have two sources of data. So the first source is from the survey of foreign invested industrial enterprises in China in 2002. So it was conducted by the former uh, Ministry of Foreign Trade and Economic Cooperation. So the survey is so far the most comprehensive uh, uh, database about foreign direct investment in China. It includes uh, information like the founding date of a joint venture, the uh, initial capital investment of each partner and uh, the percentage of equity owned by local and foreign partners. We have names of uh, these uh, joint venture partners and their home country, etc. And we find early editions of similar surveys also used by previous uh, studies. Uh, so in this uh, data source, we can identify like the ownership structure of the joint venture. However, we don't have the uh, productivity information of a joint venture. That is why we need a second source of data. So that is the annual census of industry enterprises, State Bureau of Statistics of China. So data is mainly from 1999 to uh, 2003, because at the end of 1998, the, uh, the State Bureau of Statistics of China has made 
some changes on the on the measures of data. So for consistency, we started the data from 1999. And so this data will uh, contain detailed information about companies' operational activities and their um, performance. So we can find out the uh, productivity information from this uh, database. So the previous version of the database is also used in other studies. So basically, we merge these two data. And but these two are huge database, so we use several uh, selection criteria to uh, uh, to have a refined sample. So first of all, the joint venture has to reach certain scale. It has at least 20 employees and at least 1 million uh, Chinese yuan in its initial capital investment. And also, the joint venture only has two partners. Um, one is from foreign country or from Taiwan, Hong Kong, or Macau. The other is from mainland China. The reason is that we, uh, if we have uh, more than two partners, there will be another complex city in this study. There are probably, you know, if there are three partners, that will really make the study complex. Um, and uh, so to to control this. So to can you hear me? Uh, maybe I don't need this. Uh -huh. so. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, can you hear me? Okay. Right. <coughs> louder. So the joint venture, in the sample joint venture, only has two uh, partners. And another thing is uh, because the data we don't have like if it, there are two local companies we don't have their respective ownership level in the joint venture so it's impossible to distinguish each partner so that is why we just have only have two partners anyway so the data is very large so even just considering two partners there's still a lot of information and also the foreign equity shares fall in the range of five and ninety five percent of total equity of foreign literature and also um, the ownership type of a joint venture must be consistently listed as joint venture. So that means if during 1999 and 2003, if suppose one partner acquires the other partner's equity, some kind of observations will be deleted because it will no longer be listed as a joint venture anymore. And uh, if the joint venture dies out, then the, the observation will be deleted as well. So because basically it no longer exists, it's not a joint venture anymore. So after all these um, uh, processes, we have uh, finally we have uh, 5,351 equity joint ventures and have more than 60,000 observations. Okay, so it's basically the data. So to test the two hypotheses, we have all these variables. The dependent variables, is for, of course, is the productivity. And uh, this productivity is normalized productivity, meaning uh, productivity normalized by uh, industry average. Otherwise, we cannot compare the productivity across industries. And uh, the independent variables, there are two. So because our focal, um, we, we want to analyze the how foreign equity, the equity structure, uh, this its impact on the productivity. So we have two independent variables. One is a continuous one, continuous uh, uh, foreign equity. The other one is um, categorical variables. Uh, we have three dummies, 50-50 uh, joint ventures, majority foreign owned, foreign majority owned joint ventures and uh, foreign minority owned joint ventures. And we have lots of uh, control variables. So at a firm level, the joint ventures age, the capital labor intensity, the uh, uh, labor quality measured by the average wage in a joint venture, and the joint venture size measured by the total assets of a joint venture. And then we have a set of industry uh, control variables, including the market concentration, that is the uh, Herb and Dow index, and the industry dynamism measured by the percentage of firms, new finding firms uh, in each industry each year. That is to measure the, you know, how dynamic the industry is, and also to measure the uh, entry barriers to each industry. And then we have a set of uh, year dummies and also country dummies. So for country dummies, we, we have 12 country dummies to control the uh, uh, the most represented countries in the uh, in the sample. All right. 
So here is the correlation matrix and some basic uh, descriptive statistics. We can find out um, the 50-50 joint venture, okay, the, the in pink color, uh, the 50-50 joint venture has a positive relationship with the, uh, with the productivity, and majority joint ventures also have positive relationship with productivity. However, the, the minority joint venture, negative 0.08, it has a negative relationship with the productivity of joint ventures. So these are just correlation matrix. Um, so that's somehow you know consistent with the theory. Maybe the uh, um, majority joint venture, you know, maybe it's better than minority joint venture. We'll see more in later regression. And here, the the average of the productivity is true. Remember, the the productivity is normalized productivity. Product productivity normalized by industry. So that means the joint venture's productivity is really twice as high as the industry average. So you can you see you know the foreign companies they still represent higher uh, productivity in, in in China compared with other companies in the in the industry. And uh, we find out uh, nine percent of our sample are 50-50 joint ventures, and uh, 48 percent are majority for, uh, foreign majority owned, and 43 uh, percent they are uh, local majority owned. And the average age of the joint venture is uh, 6.64 years. Okay. So this is the, you know, according to the uh, fighting year. This is fighting year and, and the vertical axis is number of joint ventures. So the majority of joint ventures are established during the 1990s, as you can see from this table. Okay. Um, because our independent variable is time invariant. So for this kind of data, we have to choose a random effect um, GLS regression. So this is the uh, table three, so the regression results. Um, so all these models they show consistently foreign equity has a positive relationship with uh, the productivity of our joint venture. No matter if it's in the whole sample, in the sample model two, in a sample excluding 50-50 joint ventures or in the uh, majority uh, foreign being majority owned only or foreign being minor minority only, we can find out that consistently they have a positive relationship with the productivity of joint ventures. And um, we'll come back to this table later. So we can, so that, that, that really lends support to hypothesis one. So now we come to see if we choose, if we use the categorical variables of the equity ownership, we find out 50-50 in model one, 50-50 joint ventures, they have higher productivity than the remaining uh, joint ventures, including majority JV and minority JV. And uh, in model two, it shows majority joint ventures has, um, uh, there's no significant result. So it's not necessary majority on the joint, uh, majority JV has higher productivity than the remaining group. The reason is majority has higher uh, productivity level than minority, uh, foreign minority joint ventures. However, they do not have higher productivity than 50-50 joint ventures. That is why they have this, uh, you know, insignificant result. And in model three, we find the minority joint ventures has, you know, consistent lower uh, productivity than any other types of joint ventures. So these three models, they are the results are consistent with our hypothesis two. So that is, the 50-50 joint ventures really have a higher productivity than any other types of joint ventures. So besides testing the, the main effect, we also uh, test the, uh, the uh, you know the control variables how they impact on the joint venture productivity. We find out the joint venture has a joint venture age has a, a negative effect on productivity of joint ventures. So this is a somehow contradictory to our prediction because we think when joint venture is older, uh, partners can build trust with each other in that way. You know, they should have higher productivity. But apparently, the data does not support this. It shows a negative relationship. Um, it's probably due to, you know, if the joint venture is too old, it's difficult to uh, upgrade your equipment, uh, your technology. So that uh, results in the lower 
productivity. So I'm not sure about this. And uh, consistent with the literature, it shows the capital labor intensity, the joint venture size, and also labor quality, they, they have a positive relationship with the uh, IDD productivity. The industry dynamism has an active effect. So that means if the industry is more dynamic, the entry barrier is low, then the joint venture, it's, it's less likely for a company to have a you know, higher productivity than the industry average. And the market concentration has an active effect. This is also uh, not consistent with our prediction. So as we predict that when market concentration is high, it is easier for companies to have this occlusive pricing that will increase their productivity. However, the results are the opposite. So it could be another side of the story. That is, um, when market concentration is high, probably companies have fewer incentives to improve their productivity. That is why they have a negative relationship. But there could be lots of other reasons. Here. Uh, it's not shown in the table. Um, there are some interesting country effects. If the foreign company is from Germany and the Netherlands, it has a significantly positive effect on joint venture productivity. If it is from Hong Kong, Macau, Taiwan, Thailand, South Korea, it has a significant negative effect. And uh, if it, it is from United States or Japan, uh, the results are not significant at all. So the reason is probably um, if from Germany or from Netherlands, uh, these companies, they probably, they can transfer, you know, higher technology. Then they really engage in uh, high uh, technology intensive, uh, you know, uh, industry. So they have higher productivity. On the other hand, uh, the lots of overseas Chinese companies, like in Hong Kong, Macau, they have very low uh, technology compared with those companies. So that's why their productivity is probably lower. Also, in this table, it shows the similar results about all these control variables, so I won't repeat them. Okay. So, in general, the paper shows greater productivity, uh, greater foreign ownership in the local uh, joint ventures has a, a positive effect on its productivity. So, this has some implications on the uh, on government in developing countries. Sometimes they have the uh, uh, ownership restrictions on foreign companies. So, foreign companies can only have, like, at least at most 30% of the ownership in the joint venture, that kind of thing. So the paper suggests that governments should relax the ownership restriction in order to encourage the foreign companies to transfer their advanced technology. Unless they have control over their technology, they won't transfer you know, more advanced uh, uh, technology or managerial expertise. However, the paper also shows that the 50-50 joint ventures, they have higher productivity than any other types of joint ventures. So although in the literature there's, a, there's some uh, um, arguments about in 50-50 in, in joint ventures, it is more likely the joint venture partners will have conflicts. So, uh, so in order to minimize the, the uh, partner conflicts, one partner should take control of this joint venture. However, this study shows probably for 50-50 joint ventures, multinational companies, they can facilitate trust and uh, facilitate knowledge sharing between companies to generate higher levels of uh, collaboration or coordination between joint venture partners. So at least this is true in China. Uh, I think uh, it, it's also probably uh, because in China, the trust and uh, relationships, they, people value more about these things than contracts control. So probably in China, uh, this kind of 50-50 uh, ownership mechanism works better. Uh, there's some future research, uh, also the limitation of the current study. So there could be other reasons that lead to the uh, higher productivity in 50-50 in joint ventures in China. So one reason is, is that 50-50 joint ventures are probably formed by those companies who are, which are equally competent. So exactly, the local companies probably they have higher, you know, ability to absorb the, the advanced technology from foreign companies because they are both strong companies that leads to the higher, you know, joint venture productivity. So argument we use in the paper is um, because joint safety, safety joint ventures they facilitate the collaborative efficiency, facilitate knowledge, build trust between partners. That could also be due to, you know, 
those companies really the best companies in China, so that is why they have the uh, higher productivity. Especially in foreign majority owned joint ventures, it's very likely maybe low companies they don't they are not that competent. They cannot absorb knowledge from the uh, foreign companies. And uh, so even though foreign companies transfer very, very good technology, it still does not produce the uh, synergy as they have expected. So this could be one reason. But due to a data limitation, we are not able to identify uh, the parent level information. If we know the local company or a foreign company, some of their uh, like R&D investment uh, advertising intensity, we are able to identify whether both are very competent companies. But unfortunately, we cannot do that. This could be a future study. And uh, more generally, we can, you know, have this uh, uh, problem. That is, um, what drives the multinationals to prefer one type of ownership structure to another type of ownership structure? So there could be lots of other reasons, like the industry differences. Maybe for some industries, it's more important for knowledge integration between partners. For some industries, maybe, you know, for the joint venture partners, they just have their um, knowledge specialization, that's okay. So, and also the uh, prior, prior joint venture experience that may also influence the partner's preference over you know, one or the other type of joint ventures. Another future study is uh, about technology's lower effects from joint ventures to uh, wholly domestic owned companies. Because in this study, when we analyze uh, the joint venture productivity, we are talking about you know, the uh, technology transfer within the company. And we are not talking about the technology spillover from joint venture to other domestic companies. So it may be more interesting. Actually, we are currently doing this, uh, this study. And uh, it's pretty interesting. All right. So that's all. If you have any questions, comments, I think we have lots of time to have discussions. Uh-huh. I may I'm not following, but is it more of a, are we talking about something like a curve of linear effect because if the majority owned are better, but then 50-50 are best, yes. so how do I, you know, maybe it's just like I can't, I can't quite grasp it, so what if you have a 60% owned by a foreign partner in 40 from a China, from mainland China, then would that be better or worse than 50-50? On average, it's worse. Oh, yeah. the majority, uh, foreign majority owned joint ventures as a category, then the average is lower than 50 50 joint ventures. But there, there is not a uh, universal use relationship. No. You want to say that. Uh, you yeah, know, that yeah, yeah. But in the model 5, so we would yeah, so we we expect that, that we do not find that kind of relationship. So that means that uh, in general, they have this uh, linear relationship between equity ownership and uh, productivity. Okay. But joint venture has highest owner, uh, productivity, but because joint venture only accounts for 9% of the total sample, it does not change the general linear relationship. Mm -hmm. So we cannot find the inverse of So it's more like we have this is the ownership and this is the productivity. Mm -hmm. And it's more like, okay, for for minority, a foreign minority owned by ventures like this here, okay, if you have a linear relation and then for 50 50, it's, it's here. You have some data on the data. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And for minority owned, it's here. You know, it's better than a uh, foreign minority owned. But still, if you grab regression, you know, these operations only account for 9% and then it won't change the general linear relation. And it does not have a universal relation. Okay, that is not how we hope. <laughs> 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 uh, 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 it's not a variable, so you can only categorize them by majority minority and 50 50. You couldn't find, oh, that wouldn't help to be more precise, maybe. You know, if you can, continuous. if you can use foreign ownership as a continuous variable. Yeah, actually, if you have a foreign equity, that is continuous variable. Okay. Yeah. Okay. This is two sets of data, well, it's continuous. Yes, two types of independent variables. Okay, okay, yeah. Okay. So continuously, because the, the, the other two types of joint ventures, like 92% of data, they have a strong linear relation. So mm -hmm. that does not let 50 50 come out. They have more 50 50 than 
probably they have a Do you distinguish between productivity and profitability? I do not consider profitability. Because I think for productivity, it's only you taking consideration in the market information. The market of all activity that will be influenced to profitability, right? That will be influenced in sales. So I think that um, we haven't had that yet. But mm-hmm. we can very do that. And to see, maybe for profitability, probably 50 50 joint ventures have higher productivity that will strengthen our argument about, you know, local participation is also important in joint ventures. Mm-hmm. Because local firms, they, they're better at the distribution of channels. They know how to distribute products, they know how to customize products to local use. So if the 50 50 have higher uh, profitability, probably that means, you know, local participation is more important and then uh, companies, you know, the competition is more important than, you know, the full contribution of the foreign companies in technology. In one of your hypotheses or one of your earlier slides, you talk about knowledge integration. So how do you, how do you operationalize knowledge integration with one of your hypotheses? Yes. For this hypothesis, um, the function, the knowledge integration is more important if it's a mechanism like not, not to directly measure knowledge integration. We can say if knowledge integration is more important than probably 50-50 joint ventures. They should have higher productivity because 50 50 basically for city trust and the uh, goodwill to companies. In that way, that if they have equal control over strategic resources, then it's easier for them to uh, uh, absorb each other's knowledge. And uh, so, in that way, they should have higher productivity. So, in this study, there's no direct matter of knowledge integration. They just use that as an argument. Because if we assume that it's important, then they think it's better. The knowledge integration is also the extent of the knowledge transfer. Yes, yeah. Technology transfer is uh-huh. all partners into the day itself. Yes. So, yes. so uh, here we talk about knowledge transfer from foreign companies to domestic companies and also how the master companies absorb the technology. So like the integration of the of the two parts uh, the, the two parts of our knowledge from both foreign side and the domestic side. So, so so also by definition you're you're assuming that the foreign partner always is more advanced as compared to the Chinese partner. Uh yes. But, I mean, in terms of technology, technology the other um, question I have was with regard to your findings about that it's not significant relations uh, of good and good um, within the percent of equity ownership. Uh, do you have any hypothesis as to why this would be the case and we found the, the significance of German and evidence and you agree that the high, uh, the high technology and the high quantum Taiwan the low technology so in the case of U.S. and Japan um, I think uh, it's probably because they, they are at the youth of uh, Germany and Hong Kong. So they probably they have some high tech industry, they've been engaging in some high tech industry, but in the meantime, probably they're still, they have lots of uh, business in you know, like apparel industry. So I, I don't know exactly why they need to resolve that. So, so would it be better then to, instead of just using the country of origin, which are using the country companies anyway, mm-hmm. to, to use the type of industry? So, for instance, to try to see my type versus what they need in the type of the type? Yeah, yeah. Sure. Is there, is there any relationship that I did with sort of the firm? From Germany, those that are formed with German partners would seem to be more in the high tech or not. Just descriptively, have you looked at that? No, not really. Just one thing, the consideration of industry average, you know, 
consider results, consider constant results for consistent results for you know, for every country. So yeah, we were already you know for for regression it's like we not really have these variables but also the ninth and two thousand and also for Germany, for Netherlands. So if they are in the same regression after we get results I mean we already take into consideration of all those feature variables. We still have these significant results. Now mm, you have one three form. By model to explain the variance of the production production. Yeah. Uh, I I found that you know the upper uh -huh. the upper for your for by model is very low. So I think maybe your model is not strong enough. To explain the variance of the product Oh, you mean after? Yeah, after, yeah. After yeah. The, 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 the study is a random cashier regression, it's different from the OIS, so the R square does not necessarily mean much. So as the OIS, the higher the R square, the, 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 all these variables can say a lot about the regression. But in random test uh, GLS regression, the uh, for the R square they they calculate in different ways. So they cannot tell if the R square is, is a small number then it's not the result. They cannot tell that. Okay, another question. Uh -huh. um, and now mm, so the regression you can uh, mm, regression card bar. I will notice this number is after the standard standard map. Regression Yeah, you can you can use the regression card bar. Yeah, see, see this number is half the normal standard. You know, for them, no for a healthy and and uh, fish, they <coughs> they are higher in different scales. So now you get the result of the equation. You should use uh, the standard. You should send the stand, standard. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and then you can have when for healthy have a strong effect when you fish or in other. In all the control variables that are considered by industry? No, no, not by industry to remove the difference. Because the other program is going to use a different scale in Myra, and the A is going to use a different scale. Yeah, so you Yeah, 
after we control each after we control the the supply uh what you're finding I mean if I'm reading this correctly, what you're saying is that the size of the joint venture is um is quite is very significant in terms of explaining for the performance of the joint venture. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Uh, then also when we talk about the United findings between Hong Kong and Taiwan firms. So my question is for Hong Kong and Taiwan firms because typically these are smaller size investments in terms of size and measure by assets, they would be small than a big European um, one. So could actually size be really the, the, the uh, variable that's predicting the, the kind of findings that you have? Okay. Could be. The, uh, I can I can I can find correlation between the size and the uh, country or we can see uh, which country uh, which country has really has larger scale of joint ventures. Mm -hmm. Probably it's because you know these joint ventures, the most joint ventures, are very small, lower than fifty. Yeah. But like you're not talking about interaction. It could be an interesting fact. So, uh, the, but I would have to test even like which of these relationships is more significant because it could be that perhaps the size mm -hmm. is more significant. It's really the most significant because it's really mm -hmm. a okay. relationship. Mm -hmm. um, so, it could be more significant than the country of origin. And so, it's not so much about high tech versus low tech. Mm -hmm. It could be you know, that it's the size and there could be a very long effect between the size and also the size. Because when I think of the CEO mm -hmm. of the German company, and I think I know what you're talking about, it's not just the audience in fact. So, I mean, obviously that's a large scale of the long term potential of technology itself, mm -hmm. um, but then for the whole Hong Kong Wall Street, a pretty small scale. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Also, it's a very small tax. Yeah, probably it's due to the strategic size or the technology they use, rather than, you know, where it's. Do you also have control data for when a large Chinese corporation starts a new division, effectively destroying venturing with itself? So you eliminate the cultural difference, you eliminate a lot of the issues, but it is still truly joint venture. It's just a swift parent corporation. Parent corporation, the Chinese parent corporation? Yes, so a large corporation. Or it could be a domestic joint venture. I think 
questions or comments? I thought the question was, this is more, um, a little bit of a speculation. Ten is always favored for of the 50-50 trade interest as opposed to four of the majority only center, even though it is permitted. Mm -hmm. So could it be that the, uh, the government policy and regulations, because it's more supportive of 50-50 danger, so in a sense, I mean, you know, you don't have to talk to those here. Mm -hmm. Could that in some way also contribute to high productivity because the policy is more important? Mm -hmm. I think, uh, first of all, the, you can see from the data only 90% of the data is my measure. So in fact, really the government has special policy, tax rates, uh, special incentives for companies. There should be a higher percentage of profit, 50 to 50 of measure. The second thing is uh, the data is from 1999 to 2003. Mm -hmm. So that time the government, I think from many of the they, they, they open their mind, they open the, the, the uh, restrictions on mm -hmm. these profits. It's not like in the early 1990s, probably that kind of incentive. So it might not be formal sets of restrictions for incentives, but I think mm -hmm. most of I know that when it's a 50-50, somehow the government is more important. Mm -hmm. okay. I think our should support the local American, right? Like the national, the national system. Probably they want to restrict the foreign machine to be less than this percent. Well, but it's, it's also for the sense for technology, so mm -hmm. there are people kind of distracting tech every day. If you're talking about the sense for really high technology, the board of companies will not be able to operate it in more effective ownership. Mm -hmm. So if the technology, let's say, that's great needed by the country, I would say the government in general is just more important. That's something which is 50-50 and more than the board of foreign venture. It might be that both of those. Mm -hmm. but, but because both of us know, I mean, both of us know that the law is... It's like, for this specific, I think for this specific, which I mentioned, local companies are likely to be more companies, companies, right? Mm -hmm. For example, for, uh, for, um, foreign majority owned joint ventures, so for a foreign majority uh, only joint venture, so the local companies um, are less likely to be more competent. Like in terms of their their, their size, their absorption capacity, all those kinds of things. And for this specific joint ventures, maybe local companies, they are you know really big companies. As as far as I know, for, for the uh, joint ventures and also moving up to China, maybe they use this specific joint ventures because after all they are all Chinese companies are big. And uh, they are they have very high and comparatively high manufacturing skills. So and also they have the, the government really pays attention to these companies, and uh, they have lots of special policies to try to develop these companies in the industry development to be the star, to be the exporter, to be even multinational companies in, in the in the world. So it's possible companies have very uh, special incentives for these companies. And when these companies, when they go with foreign companies, probably they want to form 50-50 joint ventures because they are also have high bargaining power. So they are more likely to form the 50-50 joint ventures and then to the, uh, you know, higher productivity. So I think from this sense, yes, yeah, uh, the government, if the government really, you know, supporting these companies, uh, that will benefit their productivity in the long run. In the uh, Chinese pattern, we can divide into two groups. One is a big home, not the prior part. And I wonder whether there are two, uh, the two different groups have some uh, different performance of their government in your data. Uh, in my data, whether they are still owned or not still owned, they have no effect on the uh, uh, productivity of joint ventures. But in other studies, they find that there are some effects. In the, uh, the paper I mentioned before, the Buckley 2002 paper, they find that uh, in joint ventures with state owned companies, uh, the state owned companies are less likely to uh, have a, uh, to absorb technology from foreign companies. And they have a lower profit capacity and uh, they benefit less 
from having joint ventures in four companies, the four collectively own joint ventures. Uh, company, they, they are more likely to keep, you know, higher technology to lower for foreign companies. Yeah. For a paradise, their, their paper does not deal with paradise companies. But for, for this paper, we also can show that, that it does not have any significant results. For that. Thank you. 